Welcome everyone, this is the ninth episode of the Rust tutorial series and today we'll talk about structs. We already mentioned structs in the data types video, today we'll go more into the details on how we can create, use, modify structs. A struct is a data type that is used to use multiple data types and also with names. They are similar to tuples that they are unnamed uh, compound types that have uh, multiple data types, but they have something called fields. They're used when we want to have uh, a complex uh, data type. And by default, uh, structs are immutable as uh, variables. To define a struct, we can type the word struct. And for example, we can create a struct called user. You see, we have a name for the struct. Usually is singular, not plural, so user and we can have fields. For example, here I want to create a struct with a name, an email. I want to know if is active and age, like this. And we'll use these types. Here we have key value pairs, for example, the key name, and this is the type of the value, because here we are defining a struct. Let's create an instance of this struct. We define a variable user1, we can define a name, string from John Doe, an email, doe at mail.com, is active, is a boolean, true, and age, 25. Let's say that I want know, to print just the name of this struct. This is something that is very common also to with other programming languages. We use what is called a dot notation. Here we can use this print statement. We don't use this uh, type. We don't uh, define it to define this like this. Q. So we get a warning because we have uh, uh, fields that we are not using, but you can see here user one name colon John Doe. Print all the values. Uh, name, email, I like this. I think it will work. Okay. Name, email is active, age, and we have these four fields like this. Control L, cargo run dash Q, and we have here the values. So John Doe, do email, active true, and age 25. There is also a trick to print the whole uh, struct. I can use the debug statement like this with a hashtag. And then here we can print the value in like this. So let's try again with this syntax. You can see here that at the end, we can see now that we are printing the whole uh, struct. Can I modify one field of the struct? This part is important because it's not uh, the same for all the programming languages. Let's say that I want to modify the name from John Doe to Francesco. User1 dot name equal string from Francesco. We have an error. The structs by default are immutable as variables are. So I just can add here let MUT user one. Let's see if this does work now. And now it works. Let's try to print the name like this. Control L, Calgaround Q. And you see that now the name is Francesco. So I could modif modify this instance, user one, this instance of this user, by having a mutable uh, struct uh, instance. I can't uh, have uh, a single mutable field that can have uh, something like this. Either an instance is a whole mutable or whole immutable. I want to show you how we can use an external function to create an instance of a struct. Let's create a function that helps us to build a user. And we can have something like this. I think this one is correct. Yes, let's read it. Function build user is the name, and we have a name, an email, is active, bool, and age. And you see here, we have something strange here, because here we have, we don't have like something like this, but we have a, the single name, because if the parameters of the function are the same as the fields in the struct, we can omit that. And that's called the, a field init shorthand. We can also have some fields that by default are already populated. For example, let's say that in input we want to get the name and email, but by default is active and an age we have, let's say, a default one. Is active, true. And the age, I don't know, 25. My age. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay. 
we defined this uh, function. Now let's try to use it. We can build this uh, using this function. We have a string from John Doe, a string from uh, at mail.com. Print uh, all the values, name, email, and active. Okay, we have all of these. Cargo run dash Q, name, email, active and age. I want to show you how we can use an existing instance to create another instance. Let's create this uh, a new instance called user1. John Doe, Doe at mail, is active. Let's put false. Age, let's put 40. Starting from this, we can create a new instance. Let's create, for example, a user called user2. Let's have a user called not Jane Doe, but Francesco, that has the same email, is active, and also age. The fact that it has 40 as age, of course, it's a coincidence. As email, we can have user1 dot email is active. We can have user1 dot is active. Age, we can have user1 dot age. Let's try to print all the values of user2 name like this email and so on. let's try to print this out cargo run dash q name francesco because we are printing user 2 we have uh, user 2 name email is active and and age let's try to print the values of user 1 after this we can print all the values of user 1 here with name email is active age can you see that here it works? Now let's try to print this below. So let's move this print statement below. Ctrl L, cargo run dash Q, error. We should try to understand this now because this could lead to many uh, problems. Let's go here on this user to dot email on line 26. We add this clone and now let's try to print it again. And now it works. But why? Check the type bool and wait. Those are types that goes on the on the stack. So in this case, we can just do it. There is something called tuple structs. What is a tuple struct? <laughs> Is, is it a tuple which is a struct or is it a struct that is a tuple? <laughs> Technically, I think it's a struct. It's called a tuple struct, but it's a, it's a struct because it has the struct keyword, so uh, it's a struct. But what's the difference here? So you see, it's a struct that has the, the name. Let's make this basic example that we have two similar tuple structs that they have uh, absolutely different concepts, but they are both represented by the same types. Of course, color is RGB, point is basically X, Y, Z, the coordinates. Here, we can have uh, these two instances. We can have this instance, uh, we can call it black, which is based on color, and origin, which is a point. If I had used just tuples, uh, this could be like confusing. Let's say that I have a project which has uh, both colors and points, and I'm using tuples. could uh, have a function that gets a tuple in input, and I could, by mistake, pass a color instead of a point, or a point instead of a color. And of course, this does work. We have black and orange. They can be used in when we don't want something like very redundant and decide like color, RGB. We know what we are talking about. Last concept, and then we are done for today. They are unit-like struct. What is a unit-like struct? Is a struct that has no fields and no values example struct user fn main let user user we can even print it need to put some sort of debug i think calculate dash q user it's a very clean uh, syntax you see struct user without any empty curly brackets uh, even here struct user let user equal user it's similar don't know to having for example an empty tuple or an empty array but at least we have the concept so let's say that we know we have the some requirements but we still don't know exactly what a user will look like but we know that there will be a user at some point in our program so we can start with a unit like struct it's basically an empty struct we can define these single types of single struct and i like that the syntax it's very, very clean.